Next, Mr. Chameleon and the case of the bewildering body on the Bowery. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters in his most famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer aspirin. Mr. Chameleon, as you all know, is the famous and dreaded detective of Central Police Headquarters who frequently uses a disguise or impersonation to confuse the criminals he is tracking down. In tonight's case, he appears in a particularly clever disguise which the audience will at all times recognize. Tonight, we give you Mr. Chameleon in the case of the bewildering body on the Bowery. Like all great cities, New York has its bizarre and seamy side a region where almost anything can happen, and does. And our story opens as Mr. Chameleon, the great detective, is leaving the city morgue in company with the commissioner of police. And both of them stop short as the dead wagon pulls up, and Casey, the driver, supervises the removal of a body, a body attired in filthy rags. And the commissioner says, What's this body, Casey? Oh, I see it has the DOA tag, dead on arrival. Yes, Commissioner. Just another bum killed on the Bowery. Mm -hmm. This one was shot to death, but no one saw the shooting. Ah, poor devil. Nameless, homeless, from the street of forgotten men. I wonder if that's true, Commissioner. What do you mean, Chameleon? The man was certainly a bum. Look at his filthy clothes. Yes, I know. But the uh, man doesn't quite seem to go with the clothes. Look him. Look at his hands, for instance. Hmm? Well manicured, aren't they? Uh, yes, that's odd. Very odd. Casey? Yes, Mr. Chameleon. Uh, take this body inside and strip it. Let's have a look at what's underneath those dirty clothes of a derelict. Chameleon, this is really astonishing. Yes, isn't it, Commissioner? A well-groomed man, clean, well-fed, not a sign of dissipation. I'd say offhand he was a man of culture and background. And what the devil was he doing down on the Bowery? And shot to death. Don't forget that. Murdered. Well, I suppose the first thing is to find out who he is. How about it, Commissioner? Well, the case is yours, Chameleon. You're in charge from now on. Good. Casey? Yes, Mr. Chameleon. Uh, have these uh, filthy clothes disinfected and sent to my office. And hold the body. Don't bury it after the usual length of time. Keep it here in the morgue until I say otherwise. This man is no ordinary Bowery bum. He was murdered, and I suspect it was viciously well-planned murder. <laughs> And later, in Mr. Chameleon's office at Central Police Headquarters, we find Mr. Chameleon and Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold examining the recently fumigated clothes. And Mr. Chameleon is saying... Uh, did you give the dead man's description to the uh, Missing Persons Bureau, Dave? Light brown hair, medium height, about uh, 37 years old. Yep. So far, they'd had no reports of anyone answering that description being missing. These clothes, of course, were far too big for the man. Originally, they were very good clothes. Someone, no doubt, gave them away to a charitable organization. Mr. Chameleon, what's this on the inside of a pocket? Hmm? It's a tag. Lowell and Hardy, the finest tailors in New York. Another tag. The customer's name, Lucius Malcolm. That sounds familiar. Well, it should. Lucius Malcolm is a very prominent man. Rich. You think the name tag means anything? No, not a thing, Dave. Clothes like this are often given away without the owner thinking to remove the name tag. So, where does that leave us? Exactly nowhere. Now, there's only one thing that I'm sure of. This man was not a derelict. Dave, exactly where was the body found? About a hundred feet away from Bowery Rose's flop house. The worst place on the Bowery. It's mm. like a rat hole. And Rose is the most horrible woman in New York. Believe me, Mr. Chameleon, Rose isn't just tough. She's not human. I have never met the lady, but she sounds fascinating. I know enough dead men have been carried out of her place to fill a cemetery. 
Dave. I think I'll um, look the place over. Maybe it's high time I did meet Bowery Rose. And so it is that Mr. Chameleon finds himself in the dark and dreadful place known as Bowery Rose's Flop House. And he glances around him at the hopeless men sleeping on the floor. Then back to the grotesque figure of a woman who stands facing him menacingly, her arms folded across her chest. What do you charge these lost souls who sleep on the floor, Rose? Ten cents. Uh-huh. And they sleep on sacks, not on the floor. Oh. For two bits to get a cut. Cheap for the money. I'll bet. And this place is like the lower pits of the inferno, presided over by... By uh... what? Listen, you cheap copper. If you think you can insult me, you got another guest coming. I run a decent place. And I told you, I don't remember any guy like the one you spoke of. Think hard, Rose. Think hard. Mr. Comedian, I said I didn't remember him. Fifty or a hundred bums come go every night. I never look at them. They all look alike anyway. Well, this one didn't. He was clean-shaven, well-groomed, a gentleman. He was still a Bowery bum, wasn't he? Why don't you bury him? Bury him and forget about him like all the rest. Because he was murdered, and I am going to find the murderer. He was shot not a hundred feet away from this place. Well, don't look at me. I never leave this place. I've been away from my job in three years. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Rose. Let me get this straight. You haven't been out of this house in three years? You heard me. Anyone will tell you. I ain't well. Besides, I like to keep an eye on these guys. I'm like a mother to them. You're a liar, Rose. You're a dirty liar. Well, one of your paying guests seems to disagree. Why is she a liar? Because she is. I had to wait ten minutes the other night to get a cop. I was in my room, wasn't I? No one ever seen me leave this place. Mr. Comedian, this guy takes dope. He ain't responsible. You old hag, you ought to be locked up. She even gets a buck, Mr. Comedian, for sending us poor guys to a phony joint called the Haven for the Homeless, where we get free clothes. Only we have to be sent by her. She owns it. Shut up, you loony, or I'll run you out of here. Rose, what is this Haven for the Homeless? Well, you heard him, didn't you? It's a place where they hand out free clothes, that's all. And I don't own it. I don't know nothing about it. You ever heard of Lucius Malcolm? No, I didn't, and I'm fed up on your questions. You got nothing on me? Not yet, Rose. Not yet. But it would be a great pleasure to get something on you. If not for this murder, then perhaps for another one. I'm sure you've been mixed up in plenty. You get out of here! Nobody is telling me when to get out of anywhere. The only reason I'm going is that I have an appointment with Lucius Malcolm. But sooner or later, Rose, you and I are sure to meet again. And if I find that you have been withholding information, we'll throw you in jail pronto. But Mr. Chameleon, as he knows, is still at a dead end. And he rings the bell of Lucius Malcolm's East Side Hope without the real hope of getting information here. Yet he doggedly keeps on, and when the door is opened, he stares with interest at the strange and solid man who stares back at him aggressively. What do you want? I am Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters. I want to see Lucius Malcolm. Who are you? My name's Trumper. Mr. Malcolm ain't seeing nobody. He'll see me. Detective Sergeant Arnold has already called him. He won't see you. He won't see anybody. Look here, Trumper. I'm a policeman. Mr. Malcolm will see me. A man has been murdered, and Mr. Malcolm's name tag was found in his coat. Tell Mr. Malcolm I'm here. Okay, but he won't see you. Of you... course I'll see him, Trumper. How do you do, Mr. Chameleon? I'm Lucius Malcolm. Well, how do you do? I'm sorry if you've had difficulty with Trumper. Mr. Malcolm, you... You can go, Trumper. I said you could go. Yes, sir. That is a very strange character you have for a servant, Mr. Malcolm. Oh, Trumper isn't a servant. This is the servant's day out. Poor Trumper is simply a piece of flotsam I befriended. He looks after the furnace, does odd jobs around the place. His big complex is he doesn't like the police. Mr. Malcolm, I'm here because a coat with your name on it was found on the body of a murdered man in the bar room. Yes, yes, Detective Sergeant Arnold told me. Do you know, Mr. Chameleon, I can't even recall that coat? Well, try, Mr. Malcolm. It's very important. It was a dark blue top coat made by Lowell and Hardy. It's absolutely necessary for you to remember what happened to it. I 
assure you, Miss Chameleon, I... Wait. Now I remember the coat perfectly. That coat was sent to the... Excuse me, please. Yes, certainly. Hello? Mr. Chameleon, just a minute, please. You, Mr. Chameleon. Oh, thank you. Hello? Mr. Chameleon, Dave Arnold. Yes? I've got big news for you. A young society woman named Alice Randolph has sent an exact description of the dead man to the Missing Persons Bureau. Pick her up immediately. Take her to the morgue and see if she can identify the body. Then bring her to my office. I'll be there as soon as you are. Mr. Malcolm, now about that coat. Was your dead man identified? No, not yet, but I have hopes. Uh, what about the coat? When did you last use it? A few months ago. Trumper often makes up bundles of my discarded clothes and takes them to a Bowery mission called Haven for the Homeless. Haven for the Homeless? Do you know the place, Mr. Chameleon? No, Mr. Malcolm, but I've heard it mentioned. The first time was in Bowery Rose's flop house, the most horrible place of its kind in New York. Now, um, one more thing. Did you ever hear of Alice Randolph? Randolph? No. Why do you ask? Miss Randolph is the woman who may identify the body. Her world and your world are the same, Mr. Malcolm, and it's a million times removed from the world of the Bowery. Yet there is some connection between them, and I have got to find out what it is. And later, at his office in Central Headquarters, Mr. Chameleon is bending over a weeping girl, and he is saying gently, (laughs) So you identified him, Miss Randolph. You identified the man who was shot to death on the bar end. Yes. Yes, it was Tom Little. I recognized him instantly. Tom and I were engaged to be married. Where was he from? Seattle, originally. We got engaged just before he entered the air corps. Well, that must have been some years ago. Yes, it was, Mr. Chameleon. You see, Tom was sent to a hospital in England, suffering from battle fatigue. He got out of the hospital and vanished completely. I didn't hear from him for years. But you finally did hear from him? Two weeks ago. He'd been a victim of amnesia, but he was fully recovered. He was sailing for this country that very week. After that, silence. Silence. Till I saw him today. What? He didn't let you know what boat he was sailing on? No. No, he said he'd simply walk in and surprise me. Oh, Mr. Chameleon, what happened to him? What could have happened to him? To die like that on the Bowery? Why? Those are questions I will move heaven and earth to answer. Tell me, did he ever speak of a Lucius Malcolm or a man named Trumper or Bowery Rose? No. Men. Always the blind alley. Yet there must be a way out of it. Miss Randolph, I want you to make a list of everything you know about Tom Little. His background, his education, the sort of work that he did. Somewhere there's a signpost that will point to his murderer. Take your hands off me. I ain't done nothing. A dumb cop. You got no right to bring us here. Shut your trap. Mr. Chameleon. Coming, Dave. You excuse me, Miss Randolph. I'll be be right, right back. Well, what have we here? Hello, Rose. Hello, Trumper. Why, Dave, don't tell me these two characters are friends. Looks like it, Mr. Chameleon. You told Detective Foley to shadow Trumper here, and he followed him right into Rose's flop house. So what? I had business with Rose. I don't doubt it. What business, Trumper? Rose, what business? Answer me, both of you. What business did the two of you have with each other? Please remember you're speaking to a lady, Mr. Chameleon. And unless you give me a straight answer, Rose, I will lock you up. Trumper came to my place to deliver some old clothes. He brought them straight to me instead of one of the missions. Trumper. That's right. You heard what she said. You're both lying. Dave, hold Trumper and Rose. I'll make up my mind later what to do with them. Mr. Chameleon, Mm -hmm. someday you might get hurt. Someday, if you keep poking your nose into other people's business, you might even get killed. And whoever did it would get away with it. Hmm. No one would get away with it. Don't ever think that, Rose. I am going to find out who murdered Tom Little, and it is possible that I might be killed in the attempt. But whoever did it would not get away with it. It can't be done. Oh, yes, it can. There are ways of doing it, Mr. Chameleon. You'd be surprised. There are ways it can be done. 
Mr. Chameleon and the case of the bewildering body on the Bowery continues in just a moment. Next time you want relief from an ordinary headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain, remember that one thing you can take with complete confidence is genuine Bayer aspirin. You can take it confident of amazingly fast relief, for Bayer aspirin is actually ready to go to work in two seconds. And you can take it confident of really dependable relief, for no other pain reliever can match its record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. Don't ever forget this unmatched record. It's important. Because it means you can take Bayer aspirin sure in the knowledge that it will bring you the gentle relief that's important to your health. So don't experiment with drugs that have not been proved by years of successful use. For the two most important kinds of relief, fast relief and dependable relief, do as millions do, be sure with Bayer aspirin. When you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now back to Mr. Chameleon and the case of the bewildering body on the Bowery. The strange murder of Tom Little, who was shot to death on the Bowery, seemed to present an unsolvable mystery to Mr. Chameleon. But slowly the pieces are beginning to fit together. The information is beginning to accumulate. And we find Mr. Chameleon pacing in his office and saying to Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold... Dave, Tom Little arrived in this country the very day of the night that he was murdered on the Bowery. He came in on the liner Arconia. We checked that passenger list and he was last seen taking a taxi. Now, if we can just find that taxi driver, we'll also find out where he was going. Now, what about Trumpet and Bowery Rose? Trumper, Mr. Chameleon, has a savings account. A savings account of $50,000. $50,000 for a handyman? Dave, are you sure of that? Absolutely. And it's true that Bowery Rose never leaves her flop house. She hasn't been seen leaving the place in three years. That is very interesting, too. And so was her statement that someday I might get killed and whoever did it would get away with it. Oh, that was just a cheap crook boasting. Uh Uh-uh. It was more than that, Dave. Have uh, Bowery Rose and Trumper been released? On your orders, Mr. Chameleon, yes. Mm -hmm. I want them at large. Because, Dave, I'm going into Bowery Rose's flop house, disguised as an old derelict named Duke McCarthy. Mr. Chameleon, that flop house is a terrible place. You know yourself how many men have come out of their feet first. Perhaps, but I want to see that place from the inside as one of the inmates. How does it all tie in with Tom Little's murder, Bowery Rose, Trumper, Alice Randolph, the flop house? I don't know. Though I have a fantastic theory, and I think I'll find the answer in that hideous haven for derelicts. And so Mr. Chameleon assumes the disguise of Duke McCarthy, a derelict, one of a thousand such lost souls. And in the ghastly flop house run by Bowery Rose, we find him addressing that overpowering figure and saying in the voice of Duke McCarthy, Yes, sir, I heard a lot about you, Rose, so I made up my mind I had to try this place. Quite a joint you got here. Don't call it a joint and don't call me Rose. Where'd you come from? You're a new one to me. Told you, never been here. And uh, you wouldn't see me on the street on account I hear you... Never go out on the street. That's true. What are you staring at me like that for, Rose? Just looking you over. I always look him over. You say your name's McCarthy? Duke McCarthy. And, uh, here's my two bits. I want the best bed in the house. Ain't you gonna take it? Hey, you gotta let me stay here. I'm dead beat. I gotta get a good night's sleep. Okay, give me the money. Take this cot here. Thanks. Hey, uh, by the way, what's that door over there? What business is it of yours? Just wanted to know, that's all. Uh, an exit? Case of fire or something? No, it ain't an exit. The door leads into my living quarters. And just pretend there's a no admittance sign on that door. I don't let any of you dirty bums come near my room. 
You understand? I understand. I understand. I'm all for privacy myself. Okay, just remember it. Night, Rose. Pleasant dreams. You know, I uh, think I'm going to like this place. Yes, sir, I expect to sleep like a baby. But the following morning, back in his office at Central Headquarters, Mr. Chameleon shows the results of a completely sleepless night. Yet he seems to be tremendously excited and alert, and he's saying to Detective Sergeant Arnold... Dave, it was like something in a nightmare. The room was so stifling, it's a miracle that I didn't fall sound asleep. But I didn't. And the results of my vigil were incredible. Now, it's just a case of checking up. Did you get Detective Foley in? Yes, sir. I told him to watch the flop house, and I gave him the description that you gave me. I said to follow the person of that description and never let them out of sight. Good, good. Now, um, Alice Randolph, is she here? Right outside. Miss Randolph, Mr. Chameleon's ready for you. Good morning, Mr. Chameleon. Good morning, Miss Randolph. I'm sorry to bring you down here, but this is very urgent. I want you to try to remember exactly how long Tom Little has been away. Now, I mean by that, how many years was it since you last heard from him before he vanished? You mean, how many years did he have amnesia? Yes. Now, think carefully, please. This is very important. Well, it was about six years and... And nine months. Three months. Less than seven years. Why, yes, but I don't see what... Miss Randolph, in seven years, Tom Little would have been legally dead. Somebody wanted him to be legally dead. But why? And who? Who would want such a thing? Tell me, did Tom Little have a will? I believe he did. He left it in England. He wrote to me that he'd left everything he had to me. Then you would have been taken care of. What do you mean? I'm sure that Tom had nothing to leave. Well, I'm not. Dave, I've just had an idea. I want you to go to the probate court and search all the records with a fine-tooth comb. You mean go through the wills? Every one of them, dating back about seven years. If we find what I'm looking for, I think at last I will be able to fit together the final pieces of the puzzle. We'll at least know how a man like Tom Little came to be found shot to death on a street like the bar end. And the following day, it is a triumphant Mr. Chameleon who mounts the rickety stairs of Bowery Rose's flop house. And he says to Dave Arnold... All right, Dave, this is it. The place is surrounded. You stand on guard at the top of the stairs. Do you think they're all waiting for you in Bowery Rose's living quarters? I'm sure they are, Dave. They'll try to kill you, Mr. Chameleon. You're walking into a rat nest of rattlesnakes. I know. Bowery Rose wants to try out that theory that I can be murdered and the murderer will get away with it. Well, we shall see. All right, watch it, Dave. If I need you, I'll call. Come in. Well, so you're all here. Fine, Trumper and Rose, and it was very nice of you to come, Mr. Malcolm. Mr. Chameleon, I don't understand this at all. Why should we meet in this dreadful place? I thought it was appropriate, Mr. Malcolm. In this sordid room where Tom Little was brought so Rose could outfit him in the rags of a Bowery bum. He was brought here, of course, after he was killed. Killed in your home, Malcolm. In my home? Are you nuts? No, Trumper, I am not crazy. You did the actual killing. You must have to have gotten that $50,000 you have in the bank. Malcolm, you paid the $50,000. Mr. Chameleon, this is insane. I don't know what you're talking about. I never heard of Tom Little. Ah, I was hoping that you'd say that. That, Malcolm, is the most incriminating statement you could have made. What? Don't you realize what you've done? You've just denied that you knew of the existence of your own stepbrother. But, Mr. Chameleon... I was hoping you'd do a thing like that. Like all criminals, even high-class criminals, you are a stupid man. But I... I was ashamed of Tom. I never mentioned him to anyone. Well, he hated you, too. He hated you so much, he never even spoke of you to his fiancée, Miss Randolph. Nevertheless, he went to see you as soon as his boat docked. We found the taxi driver who drove him to your house. All right. I saw him. He, he came to borrow some money. But I didn't kill him. Why would I kill him? Because, Malcolm, a will was filed in probate court by your uncle, leaving $300,000 to Tom Little. And in the event of his death, it would go to you. In another three months, Tom Little would be legally dead. And you saw to it that he did not come to life. And I murdered him, huh? Yes, Trumper. 
Malcolm here hired you and Bowery Rose to do his dirty work. Now, can I say something, Mr. Chameleon? I've kept quiet, but it's my turn to say something now. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I can guess what it's going to be, Rose. You are going to take the blame for the murder. Yeah? You are also going to kill me and take the blame for that. Maybe even leave a note of confession, because you think that you won't be caught. I won't. No? Look here, Rose. Look out of this window. We are three stories up. No fire escape. No exit. Except that door. Well, the other night I lay awake and watched that door. You? You thought I was a derelict named McCarthy. I watched that door and I saw you go in for the night. A few hours later, I saw a man come out. I gave Detective Foley a description of that man. He was Harry Devron, a Broadway spender. Only to the inmates of this flophouse, he is known as Bowery Rose. What's that to me? You are Harry Devron or Bowery Rose. You're a liar! That is why you thought you could kill me and get away with it. Bowery Rose would disappear. Harry Devron would remain. But if anything happens to me, Devron... The police are all ready to pick you up. You're a liar. You keep away from me, Trumper. Stay where you are, Trumper. I have a gun. I'll shoot you all down. There we are. Here is the wig. What are you... The game's up, Rose, or Harry, I should say. I arrest all three of you for the vicious murder of Tom Little. Dave, come in. Here I am, Mr. Chameleon. Handcuff them together, Dave. So Barry Rose is a man. Mm-hmm. And a murderer, Dave. A strange play of fate. Failure to remove a tailor's label from a coat given away has led us to one of the most startling solutions of a murder in our career. And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. you have a social or business engagement, don't let an ordinary headache upset it. Remember, Bayer Aspirin will bring you relief and quickly. Millions know how fast Bayer Aspirin works. If you've never tried it, a simple test will show you how quickly a Bayer Aspirin tablet is ready to go to work. This test reveals what happens in your stomach when you take Bayer Aspirin. All you do is drop the tablet in a glass of water and time its disintegrating speed. When it starts to disintegrate, it's ready to go to work. And as you see... Bayer Aspirin starts disintegrating almost instantly. It brings amazingly fast relief because it's actually ready to go to work in two seconds. When you buy, ask for genuine Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Listen next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in The Case of the Target for Murder. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson with dialogue by Marie Baumer from the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert. Music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. There's a vital need in the armed forces for physicians and dentists. By July, almost one-third of the present medical and dental staff will re-enter private practice. By next December, the shortage will be so acute, the Army, Navy, and Air Force will be without adequate medical and dental care. If you received your education in medicine or dentistry during the war years and have not yet served, now is the time to volunteer. Now, when the need is so great, Listen for Mr. Chameleon in The Case of the Target for Murder next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.